Hi, Hi. Yeah. yeah, good. How are you? I'm good. Really good. Well, it's awesome to have you on here. It's amazing to meet you in person. You know, I watch your videos and I know I know where you come from. For those of you who don't who don't know Andrew or who are watching, um, Andrew comes from Northwest England and he comes from a place that I consider kind of my second home. I've been to his place, you know, his town uh, many times now. So yeah, small world, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, and I've only been to your neck of the woods once. Yeah, well, I, uh, I plan but, on, you know, as soon as we can travel, I plan on being over there many more times. <laughs> if we yeah, have a lot of to, But hopefully, yeah, once, uh, once we're all out of this, I look forward to seeing you and we'll go We'll, we'll go somewhere, Paul, when you come over. Oh, yeah. I, I'll take you take on a trip. You're going to have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be showing up on your doorstep. Yeah, we. Yeah. Um, I was reading in our, on the internet today that uh, our governor here in Florida wants to uh, lift the ban from travel from the UK to Florida, even though you're at like, okay. the height of uh, cases right now. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Our, it's, our, it's only... It's only only going one way here, that's for certain. So you just got back from the Lake District, yeah? Yeah, I had a fantastic time in the lakes. That was really good. Um, but there wasn't fantastic, but, uh, you know, it's just, like like I said in, in the video that's just gone out, it's just good to be outside. Yeah. It's great to be out on those fells, uh, hiking, walking, just enjoying the scenery, taking in the views. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, you, your it's, new uh, blog came out yesterday, right? It did, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a... It's beautiful. I mean, the, the scenery yeah, is just is. stunning. Yeah, um, we were last up there 12 months ago, so it was long overdue. Um, Are you going to have another one back. coming then from uh, another vlog from the lakes? Then? Yeah. yeah, so I've got, I've just been sorting through all my footage, uh, going through all the, the video and the drone footage and the stills. So make a start on editing those stills. Um, so a few spoilers here. We've got Kelly Hall Tarn, Torva Common, uh, Tilbeth Waite, and U Tree Tarn. Wow. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I think, I think you're making the rest of us jealous. And if they don't know what you're talking about, they will they will. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I've just started on Kelly Hall Tarn today. So yeah, your uh, your lockdowns have been a little bit more restrictive than ours. So, you know, for people who haven't really experienced the tough lockdowns like you guys have, kind of well, tell us, um, you know, how's it affected your uh, photography? Yeah, how's, so, how, how's it affect, affected the travel and blogging? Yeah, so for two, so we went into tier three last Friday, which was the day we came back from the Lake District. Um, so on the Thursday before we went, uh, we were in tier two. Uh, uh, Andy Burnham, the mayor of Manchester, he was fighting to keep us out of tier three, which is what the government warned him. Yep. So we were set, sat at home on tender hooks, waiting for a decision to see whether we could go or not. Because basically, um, I think as I referred to in my in my vlog, we have a caravan. So we, we go out in a caravan, go, go to a caravan site, and then you know, off, off I go doing the photography bit. Um, now the caravan site had issued uh, guidance to say basically anybody from tier three would not be allowed into the caravan site. Wow. So as you can imagine, on the on the Thursday, we were sat there sweating, thinking, please, please, yeah. please, don't go into tier three. Anyway, Andy Burnham definitely played a blinder and kept us out for another eight days. So we haven't got anything planned. Is it as restrictive as it was earlier in the year? Because I remember early in the year, you really weren't allowed to leave the house for even, you know, maybe a, an hour of ex local exercise or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so right? it's not... It's not yeah, so that's right. Yeah, so we were we were, we were allowed that one hour of exercise. It's not that tight at the minute. You you know you can travel. Uh, the guidance is for essential travel. You know the guidance has been set by the the, the caravan sites themselves. Yeah. Um, you know a friend a friend of mine is going to the Lake District in a couple of weeks' time, and, and he he's found the guest house, and they've said, you, you know you're fine to come as long as you follow the social guidelines. So I think it all depends on you know, who's hosting you in the, in the area that you're going to. Sure. Is there the, uh, the possibility, though, that it becomes more restrictive as, as cases? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, no, so if you, if you go back to the lockdown, you know, back in March, April time, you know, basically the Lake District just closed its doors to, to anybody coming in from outside. Yeah. So obviously that's, that could be on the cards again if, if things get really bad. 
Well, let's hope. But then you've got that, that balance, haven't you, between keeping the economy going, keeping the, you know, the caravan sites, the guest house, the hotels, the pubs, the restaurants going. So all a real fine balance. Well, back, you know, think back months ago when it was at its most restrictive. Were you able to get out and vlog, do any vlogging at all? Uh, what were you doing as far? No, as so I, I only started the channel in July. Yeah, so I think it was at the end of July, my first vlog that I did. Um, and that actually refers to the, the situation in lockdown uh, and the fact that the, the, you know, the, the shooting is all very local. Yeah. So basically, I set myself, um, if you go back in, if anybody wants to watch that one, they can do, but it's my first video, um, Misty Morning Fields of Gold, something like that it's called. Uh, but anyway, have a look at that one. And it's basically about... Um, a challenge that I set myself to drive a maximum of 20 minutes to get some images. So that was the first one. So I drove uh, down the road towards um, St. Helens uh, and there's a nice little walk through some fields and a wood there. I got a couple of lovely shots there. So that was what I was doing at the time. So what is the, uh, with the current level of res tier three restrictions, what um, is that going to affect where you go? Are you going to try to vlog a little bit more locally uh, while this? Yeah, so I'll definitely, I'll definitely be local. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I can get to parts of the Peak District in an hour. I, I can't hit the lakes in an hour. Uh, and I can't, I could just about get to Snowdonia probably in an hour. Is that but, kind of, is that well, kind of the guidance, uh, like an hour, you know? No, no, it's just, you know, from personally, from a travel perspective. Where you're local. You know, if I'm, if I'm, not, stop, if I'm not stopping over in, in the van, um, I tend to do you know, two, two hours traveling, an hour there and an hour back, yeah. uh, and then a, a couple of hours doing the photography and the vlogging. Now, uh, it's I just heard, from a personal preference point of view. I heard Wales is closed. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. You can't get into Wales, so never going into Wales. So, um, so tell us. Um, so you started your, your your first vlog basically in July. So you've come pretty uh, quite a ways in just a, a couple months, right? Yeah, it's. Um, it goes back a long way. I met, if we go back to, I think it was spring 2017. I was up in the Lake District. Um, I don't know if you follow Chris Sale at all I on do. YouTube. I'm doing a workshop okay, so on, on tomorrow, in fact. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. So I, I met Chris in, in the lakes. So we both happened to turn up at the same location. We were at Elta Water. It was a beautiful misty morning. Uh, I got chatting to him and he basically said, you, you know, have you ever considered starting a YouTube channel? And I said, um, I hadn't. I said, but, you know, I, I do enjoy storytelling. Um, I'd probably do some sort of blog before I did any any, any video uh, stories. Uh, I sort of forgot about it. And um, my mum... She wasn't very well. This is going back a couple of years now. So she, she wasn't very well. And I was sharing all my journeys and my travels and the trips with her, basically taking you know, a short video on my, on my iPhone and then sending it, sending that to her, uh, sending her updates as to where I was, sharing the photographs. She's my biggest fan. You know, mum absolutely loved my photographs. She loved following me on my, my trips and my travels. I was chatting to Chris again over you know message on uh, Instagram. And he said, have you thought about getting doing a YouTube channel. So it, it, it's basically spurred me on again to do it. So I think this conversation we had was sort of maybe April, a chat with him and uh, he gave me some advice and some tips. Uh, and basically I did some practice runs and then that July one is the first one I did uh, and really enjoyed it. Really hard work. I know, you know a few of your guests have said the same before, but it is really, really hard work. So taking the photographs is hard enough. Uh, I think I said this one in my, um, my Cheshire uh, vlog at the end, walking back through the woods. It's it is really difficult, you know, to take the take the images hard enough, then to video yourself taking that. Also throwing the drone. In. <laughs> we, uh, you know, I don't think anybody really thinks anything of it. It's kind of a you have to have some time management skills when you're doing it especially if you're out doing something like sunrise or a sunset, because you have a very limited amount of time. I was doing that blog uh, that, com, um, you know, where Dave um, from Let's Click Ph Photography and I, we did that. Uh, oh, the challenge, yeah. Uh, yeah, the challenge. I didn't know, you know, do I take the pictures? Do I take the video? You know, just running around like a madman trying to get everything in. 
And yeah, you, yeah, you really have to be aware of the time, especially when you're a race against the sun or, you know, the sunset. So yeah, that one where I had the, the misty morning, that was, I was heading over to the, to the woodlands uh, and literally as I was driving along the main road, you know, you could see the orange glow was coming up in the sky. I could see the mist across the fields, the trees poking out of the mist. And I thought, I've got to get a shot of this. So it was literally pull the car over into a lay-by, jump across the road. You know, you're looking for compositions. You're conscious that the sun's coming up, that colour's getting brighter and brighter. Basically, it was, I had to get the photograph first before I even started doing the vlog. So it really was a question of making sure I got the photograph and then I could get the camera out and actually yeah. say a few words or a piece to camera. I kind of struggle with that too, because I, you know, I want to get the photograph first to make sure I get that for something, for, you know, that's the basis of yeah. the vlog, right? But then I, I feel kind of weird, like if I'm vi doing the video after I've taken the shot, you know, like to me, sometimes I think, oh, do they know that I'm taking this video after the shot? Or, you know, <sighs> I kind of wonder what people think as, but, you know, I don't, when I really sit and think about it, I, I don't think it matters too much. Um, I'm more interested in <laughs> seeing the location and, and your surroundings and the environment that's going on. Yeah, that's right. And um, the, the home fell video that's just gone out a couple of days ago when people watch this it will be a couple of days ago uh, but that home fell video i got to the bottom of the road to hodge close quarry and as you, you drive up it's about a mile and a half drive up to the the car park uh, and it was closed because they were filming season two of the witcher up there so they had the, the guard down at the bottom and he was saying you can't you can't get up you'll have to walk so of course by the time i'd walked up it's only a mile and a half but of course, by the time you've walked up, then you're looking for your compositions. The sun's yeah. coming down. The, the light was beautiful that Friday evening, but there was just not a chance I was going to be getting any uh, video footage on the ZV-1. It was just literally, I'm just going to get get some images, get the drone up, because uh, I knew I was coming up the following morning. So it was just trying to coordinate it after that. Now, I think I commented on that that photo that I think you put it on Instagram. And I said, well, you should have told yes. me you were doing your vlog. So you they needed to let you drive. <laughs> That's it, yeah. You know, I don't know what makes The Witcher more important than your vlog. No. <laughs> yeah, it was, right. it was amazing. Some of the rigging that was up over the quarry, it was it was amazing stuff. Really, really interesting to look at. But I was more interested in getting up to get my birch tree shots. <laughs> but was that quite a hike up there for you? Yes, it's about a mile and a half from the bottom. So it's, you know... It, Home fell's not very high. I don't know, maybe three hundred meters, something like that. I'd have to double check. It's not. It's not one of the highest ones. No, at okay. all. So it's a relatively easy one. Um, you know, we'd only just landed. For the uh, for the viewers though, it's hard to tell how high you're actually up because it looks like you're you're quite a ways up there. There's higher hills and higher mountains up there than you were on, but I just didn't know yeah. it was uh, how strenuous of the hike up it, it, it is. Sometimes when I watch Chris Sale's video, he's you know he's <laughs> struggling a yes. little bit. <laughs> yeah he does yes yeah, um, I and he, he goes light doesn't he so he only takes his yeah, he doesn't uh, even really take his tripod much anymore does he no he doesn't no no not when he's doing the high ones just takes his um is it canon he's got i can't remember now he does these free workshops you know just kind of like this over uh zoom I, I'm, I'm not sure what he's using actually i think i've done three of them with him now and then i'm gonna attend another one tomorrow tomorrow afternoon here yes yes really yes. nice something to do it. yeah Really informative, really nice of him to do, you know, um, very well presented. He's very organized. He, you know, presents his screen and, and goes through a slideshow and then talks about his experience and, on whatever topic he's he's discussing. So. Yeah, no, it's really good. He gave me a lot of help in getting ready to, to start my channel. So seems like shout a, out to Chris. Seems like a very, very good guy. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's talk about camera equipment a little bit. So yeah, okay. You're, you're vlogging with the... Sony, right? Yeah, said V1. Yeah. Yeah, me, me and you both. Yes. How do you like it? So, so that was, yeah, yeah, so I really, really like that. Uh, obviously, before I was just using iPhone. Yep. Um, so I think the first two were done on, done on the iPhone. Um, do you see a difference in the quality? Oh, absolutely! Yeah. yeah, big difference. Yeah, I've Huge seen difference. people. You know, I've seen people use their iPhone, and, and it's still pretty good. Yeah, but mine's a, a five SE, Paul. So mine's going back a few years now. It's, um, but no, really, just going back a bit. I had, um, 
I did quite a bit of stock photography, started about 2015, um, before I got really into my landscape stuff. Um, what I was doing was stock, and it was only, you know, a little bit, so I've probably only got about 200 images with yeah. various um, agencies. Um, but that's paid for me, ZV1. Wow. So that was like, that was that was awesome, that was, because that was just like, well, I don't, you know, the phone's okay. I could really do with a vlogging camera, but, you know, uh, at seven, eight hundred pounds to get one, yep. you know, it's it, it's not particularly cheap. Um, but I'd earned, you get paid in dollars, and you know, obviously it gets converted, but I'd earned over a thousand dollars on on the on stock stuff. So that was what paid for the, uh, the ZV1. And I'm glad I've got that. It was really good. Isn't that nice when you can do stuff? Because yeah, I've never done the stock photography too much, but. You know, I sell some prints off my website, and I, you know, I use that money just to reinvest in equipment or or yes. um, tr- or travel, yeah. and it's really nice to be able to use that discretionary money to, you know, to, you know, fund our passion, right? Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I mean, because they, they just sit on your hard drive. It, it, it was absolutely crap because I was looking at some of these images. I can't remember what started me, you know, looking at stock, but um, I thought. You know, some of these images are ideal for stock. So I started off with shorter stock. If you get your first 10 accepted and then, you know, away you go. And you soon get used to what sort of images they're like and what sort of quality they're after. As I say, I've probably got about 200 up there. So otherwise, they'd just be sat on the hard drive. Sure, yeah. Whereas at the moment, they're up there. I think they're with about five or six agencies. Um, and I periodically go on and edit a load of stuff and put it up. Now, were these just landscape shots? Because I've seen other people who, who kind of go around and they take pictures of like, uh, I don't know, like street signs or stoplights and, and they put them up there for people that want to yeah. buy those and use them in, adver- uh, you know, adverts. Um, so, yeah, so were you doing landscape type stuff? No, good. Well, I was, I was, uh, so one of my best selling shots, I think I've sold it over 200 times is um, a, a, a aerial view of a housing estate. So I'd climbed uh, this local hill and it looks down over a housing estate. And I took this aerial shot. Uh, so that goes, you know, estate agents buy it. Um, they, they appear on, you know, estate agency websites and stuff like that. Uh, any, any commentary or market economic press commentary about, you know, the housing market, it gets, gets, uh, tends to get used for that. Wow, that's really interesting. Do you um, ever see your photos out there, like when you're looking through stuff, looking through the? <coughs> um, I've not seen. I've never actually seen one just happened across it. But I do the um, Google reverse image search to see where they are. That's a good idea. So every now and again, I do that. I've got a Roman temple in. Uh, we went to Nîmes in France. I've taken some pictures of the temple, and I take them from some. You know, unusual angles, getting a different vantage on them. Uh, and I've sold again probably a couple of hundred of that. Wow. Uh, you know, key keywording is important as well. So I, I put words like legal justice, um, and they appear in a lot of the, the you know the legal blogs and uh, magazines and copy like that. So yeah, washing hands. Picture of my wife's washing her hands. That's that's <laughs> selling like mad now. <laughs> Now, do you actually did you actually do some research into the keywording thing? Because I know that's uh, yes, I do. Yeah, you do yeah. a lot of uh, just research into that. You know what words you use. Yes, so I do. I look at my image and then I find similar images and I find obviously you, you know you look for the most popular similar image and then you look at their keywords. So that's how I work that one, okay. and, and then make sure you get you know consistent keywording across. Now, are you still doing the stock photography? Do you still upload you know, to these sites? Or? Yeah, so I do, yeah. So, uh, you know, I tend to focus, especially with doing the vlogging now, time is really precious um, because obviously it, it takes 10 times as longer when you're doing the editing of the video and the, the drone stuff. Uh, I'm learning Premiere Pro at the moment as well. So, again, that's taking a bit of time. I was using iMovie before. Um but yeah, well, I'll periodically get a whole batch of stuff and then you know upload a batch of maybe 10, 15, 20 images. For those who don't know, uh, what's your main camera? What's your main still image camera that you use? Uh, yeah, so I've got a Nikon D5300. So that's a crop sensor uh, body. I've got uh, my holy trinity of lenses. I've got a 1024, 2470, and a 7200. Uh, so I take those with me all the time, and, and they're awesome, really, really good. 
Which one do you prefer? Uh, 2470 is the one I use the most. That's what I was saying. Which one do you use the most? Yeah. Yeah, the 2470 I used the most. The 7200 uh, was brilliant in the lakes. So, you know, just obviously just got back. But, you know, to really compress some of those scenes where you're looking across to the, the fells and the mountains, uh, absolutely brilliant for that. Now, now uh, the, the photo that you posted on Instagram, I think today, or was it today or yesterday, where it had that yesterday, contrasting yeah. light and shadows there, was that with the 7200? Yes. 2470 that one okay but uh, on the on the on the vlog there's one of um fairfield and that that one's come that's a 7200 uh, zoomed in right. if you if you look on the if you look on the uh, vlog you can see where i'm standing and you can see that that fell in the background and you can see the light on the background so you can get an idea of how how distant away it is and then when you see the still image you can see how well it's 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 brought that into view well, some of those shots of the lone trees that you took there uh, were just amazing. Yeah, so so they were all 24-70. So I've not got my wide angle out for any of those. So I, t I tend to move about rather than stick the lens on to, to bring everything into the, into, into the scene. Um, Let me ask you a question that I struggle with when I'm vlogging. I take a lot of, prior to starting my channel, I took a lot of my images in vertical orientation because a yeah. lot of my images went straight to Instagram, right? And, and I think generally they on Instagram, it looks better that way. Yeah. Since starting my channel, now I, you know, I, because I wanted to, you know, present on a big screen well, you know, so now it's more of a horizontal, um, kind of, I struggle with that. I don't know why. And then I try to do both, right? And, that, and again, that comes down to time management, you know, trying to vlog, you're trying to take a vertical image, you're trying to take a horizontal image. And then you just start running out of time. So is that something that you... So it's quite... It's, it's really, it's, no, it's really interesting that because when I'm taking an image, first and foremost, I'm thinking about how will that look in a print. So I'm doing a, a print size. I've got, I've got a print size in my mind. Yeah. Uh, then I've also got the fact that I'm going to crop it to 16 by 9 to do the YouTube stuff. And then like you say, you know, do you do vertical or do you do horizontal orientation? I'm looking um, at the red phone booth uh, print behind you. Oh, right. Okay. That looks yes. fantastic. So that, that's actually um, a John Petch print. Okay. Uh, so he's a, a, an artist. Uh, I got that from Dot Art um, Gallery in Liverpool. Uh, and it's the phone box. I'm a big orchestral maneuvers in the dark fan. Okay. OMD. Uh, yes. So OMD, one of the very first singles they had out was Red Frame White Light, which was about a telephone box. And that is the telephone box. Oh, is it really? Uh, so, wow. yes. So he, he, John Petch has done that. It's, it's fantastic. It's really good. Okay. Is the, uh, is uh, so the I, can't, I can't say that's one of mine. <laughs> that one is The Lone mine. Tree is you, right? That, yeah, that Lone Tree is mine. And that's Bamborough Castle in the northeast. That's oh, mine beautiful. as well, yeah. Beautiful. So what are your plans for your channel? We got about maybe 10 minutes left here. So, you know, I kind of want to know where you're going with your photography. Yeah, so you know? it's, I've seen you ask other guys, you know, what what, what the plans are. Uh, I don't have any plans. No, I started it originally. Well, obviously, Chris, like I said before, Chris got me into it. And eventually, you know, I, I did start to do it. I, I love storytelling. and I was going to do um, blogs. Uh, and when I do my Instagram posts, I tend to put quite a lot of you know blurb underneath the picture. But you know, people don't often read all that blurb. Um, and I thought people might read the blurb a bit more when it's on my website, which is again coming soon. Um, but then obviously, you know, so many people are doing the vlogging that I thought, you know, I'll, I'll skip that blog and go straight to the vlogging. I think my, my aim for it is to keep doing it. So I think the hardest part is actually getting out you know, finding new locations and new images. Sure. Um, you know, you, you're not going to see five tips on woodland photography from me. <laughs> that, that, that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much an amateur photographer. Uh, you know, for me, I think all my videos are going to be just out in the field, capturing me on my travels, my trips, my adventures. Uh, that's what it's going to be about. You know, the aim is to inspire people to get out into the countryside, to get out into nature. Um, you know, to enjoy the, the great outdoors. So that's what the aim is.
you know, my mum was absolutely my, my biggest fan, and I, I'm sort of doing that for her. I'm, I'm sure she's watching, you know, from on up high watching watching me. No doubt of that. These and, you know, she'd no be doubt. loving them. You know, my dad got me into photography in the first place, and so he inspired me, and my mum motivated me to, you know, to keep going. So that's what I'm doing it for, and to inspire people as well. Uh, and you know, if it grows, it grows. If it stays as it is, it stays as it is. But you know, as long as I'm enjoying it, I'm, I'm capturing images that I'm happy with and that I'm pleased with, and, and I'm enjoying myself and having a good time. That's what it's all about for me. No, that's real. I mean, you know, if, if that brings a bit of happiness to people and it does inspire people to get out, you know, it, it's it's a great record as well, isn't it? You yeah. know, I talked about video diaries, and, and for me, this is like the ultimate video diary, my, my photography video diary. Uh, I think about that sometimes too. You know, someday when I'm not around, hopefully there's a uh, a record of what I did for my you know, yes, even just for my kids to go back and look at. You know, hopefully they'll want to see what their dad was doing. You know, someday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully that, you know, these are preserved somewhere over the, over the next, you know, 30, 40 years or so. And, you know, when, yeah. when, when they're missing dad someday, they can go back and, oh yeah, check them out. Yeah, so I became a granddad uh, six months ago for the first time. My, my son and daughter-in-law, they had uh, a little son, Louis. Uh, Louis watches the channel, so he's a subscriber. He enjoys watching it with his dad. Um, and, and the son said to me, he said, you know, this is, this is great. He said, God forbid, if anything happened to you, he said, you know, Louis is only six months old at the moment and, you know, he, he doesn't really know you, but if, if anything happened to your dad, he said, you know, he'd be able to look back and be able to see these and have a permanent record. So that's great. That's, that, that's a wonderful way to look at it. And I think the way you, that yeah. you said that you started it because you were, you know, taking videos for your mom. And uh, I mean, I think that's the most inspiring beginning that I've heard as far as a YouTube channel beginning. And the, the reason that you're doing it, it's just, re it's really the right reason for doing it. And yeah, you know, like you said, if it grows, it grows. If not, then your kids and your grandchildren have something to look back on someday. That's right, you're, yeah. You're not around. Yeah. It's, uh, that, that's an amazing way to look at it. That's, that, that, I mean, for me, it's, you know, that's inspiring. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's a hobby. It's, you know, photography is a, a hobby for me. I've always been in, interested in on the video side as well. So, you know, it, uh, for, for example, at work, if there was ever an event or a do that we were doing, it was me that would do the photography and the videography. So, it, you know, I've, I've always done it in some way, shape or form. Uh, thoroughly enjoy it. Really want to continue to do it and, uh, you know, leave a, leave a record behind as well. I don't want to forget to ask. You had mentioned to me your son wasn't feeling well. How's he doing? Is he doing okay? Yeah, so he was a little bit better yesterday, but his temperature's gone up again today. I can't remember whether I told you, but his his wife's tested positive as well. So um, fortunately, she is feeling okay at this good. moment in time. Uh, but the good news is Louis tested negative, so good. he's not got it. So he's okay. Good, good. Oh, so yes. now she, really now she has to quarantine while he takes care of. <laughs> yes, that, that, <laughs> that's what's going to happen next. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and he's got fit running his own business in as well, so that's going to yeah. be tricky. So we, we, yeah, we, we're not sure how this one's going to play out. But you know, we're desperate to help out as grandparents. We're de desperate to help out, but obviously, you, you, we, there's not a lot we can do other than helping out with a bit of shopping and right. picking stuff up for them and dropping it off. It's so difficult. We had our first run in with uh, the virus here in our house uh, this week. Um, my son, uh, who the one that moved out uh, a few months back, he came over for a visit on Thursday evening. And then he called me later that night when he got home and said his he thought his roommate, his new roommate had uh, contracted it. And the roommate went to get tested uh, Friday morning. <clears throat> they called us on Sunday saying he came back positive. And then both since then, both my wife's and I have not been feeling well. Um, oh, nothing more than like flu-like symptoms. No, no fever. No, none of the other symptoms. Just kind of generally run down. Um, so yeah. my wife, my wife, after work today, here in about probably about a half an hour, is going to stop by one of the testing centers and, and get tested. So oh, I don't know if this possible. is the way of the world and everybody's going to eventually get it, or you know, at one yeah, time. Yeah, I think so. It, it's frustrating uh, we, we, we've been as diligent as anybody that I know as far as staying safe. And then you, something as small as a family member coming over could possibly introduce it into your, your family. 
Yeah, so uh, again, you know, my, my son James, he's been ultra careful. You know, obviously, they've got a, a newborn in the house. We've been super careful. We do groceries delivered to the home, don't go out to the supermarket. Uh, he, he thinks he picked it up in uh, Ikea when he went to um, pick up a high chair for Louis. But, but like you just said, and you know, I'm sure there's lots of people out there exactly the same, being super, super careful. Uh, but it, it, it's just everywhere, isn't it? And I Never know. It's it, that inevitability that people are, are going to get it. Yeah, it's, it's invisible. You don't know. I mean, you can do everything you can possibly do to, to not get it. But there are times that you have to go out of the house, you know. Yeah. yeah. We, have our, we have our groceries delivered now. And, uh, you know, we, we go out only when necessary. And you, know, you just never know what you touch. And you don't, you don't know. It's unfortunate that we're all going through this. And I know we all say it, but I can't wait till this is over and we get back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a ways away, unfortunately. I think so there's that degree of inevitable inevitability we, we dropped some food off for uh, my son and daughter-in-law this afternoon and on the way back you know we were chatting and said i'm sure we're going to get it at some point yeah you know it doesn't matter how careful you are um like you say you just need to touch something and then touch your face or yep. just, yeah i don't know well we're you know we're hoping for the best for your your whole family and sorry they're going through this hopefully the baby doesn't get it you know that's uh I yeah, touch wood. He's, he's fine so far. Yeah. Right? You know, as long as yeah. the baby doesn't. Yeah. yeah, he's doing good. All right, Andrew. I think we're about ready to get cut off here by Zoom, unfortunately. So okay. You know, I think I could have gone on for another hour. <laughs> but you know, um, for for those who don't follow Andrew out there, go check out his YouTube channel. He's got a fairly big following on Instagram, and I think it's under History of Modern. Is that correct? Yeah, OMD album Paul. Okay. Yeah. Go follow him on both. Came from. Yeah, you know, it's wonderful to meet you and see you and talk to you in person. I, I guess this is the way we, we meet people right now. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And I can't wait for you to come over to the UK once all this is over. I look forward to meeting you and taking you out for some photography. Believe me, I check the uh, the travel guidelines all the time. And as soon as that, you know, they give the green light, I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. brilliant thank you well, thanks for joining us andrew i'm gonna try to get this up on friday night and uh yeah this is this has been wonderful so pleasure to meet awesome you. yeah you too thanks very much you take care see you paul all right cheers all right all right, bye. All right. Bye.